Hi. Hi, Michael. Welcome here. <laughs> Thank welcome you. To, welcome to 259. Yeah. yeah. So 28 years you've been here. Yes. How long have you been practising art? Oh, well, I graduated in 1975, I think. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I... Uh, but I've had, my, I've had a work in a show in 1971, I think. Wow. I'd have to ask somebody. And uh, I just never got round to it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 51 years? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. And know, when, when did you decide to be an artist? Well, I started drawing at home when I was four. Yeah. But mum didn't like that because it was on the wall generally. And, uh, <laughs> but... Um, no, I, I, I was I, I went to uh, not to art school. I went to university to study whatever else I could think of, which didn't work out. And then at the end of that year, I was sick, and so it was when I was sick uh, that I thought to myself, "Well, if, if, if life changes like this, mm. I better get on with it." So you knew from early on to follow your passion? No, I got put off uh, at various times. You know, education in the 70s and 80s didn't encourage art. Yeah. And um, I would say even now it doesn't encourage artistic students yeah. to do what they should be doing, which is to follow, you know, what they are, they are actually best at, mm -hmm. you know, if you allow a student or a young person to do what they're best at, then they develop their full potential, their full confidence. And uh, I, I ended up, you know, getting... It took the illness to really make me realise what I wanted to do mm. in life. Mm -hmm. And it was, a bit, it was a bit of a desperate measure at that point. But, uh, yeah. What, what inspires you with your art? Oh, well, I suppose... I came from quite a political family right. in the sense of uh, my grandparents on my mother's side were quite political. And so um, there's always, you know, the last 20 years politics has leaked in here and there. And uh, so, you know, the, in some paintings over the last two or three years, there's, uh, you know, uh, signs of, uh, you know, disintegration or or confrontation within society, you know, in terms of democracy versus anarchy or or uh, autocracy or whatever, you, or whichever way you want to call it. And, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I follow those arguments, but also uh, the arguments about, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, our, our marriage to our, our very tight possessive marriage to um to uh, consumerism and to um uh what do you call that capitalism and mm. uh, you know so um, uh, you know i think we have to question our values all the time mm. and that's what art's for mm. and so uh, that's what i do uh, quite a bit sometimes i'm doing other stuff yeah but uh, that's that's and so it also touches on global warming and and well, climate change now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So since since you started painting, so back in mm. 1971, have you seen anything, like those political themes come full circle, or do you think was... Oh, I don't the, think I was very political way oh, back then. Right. I think okay. yeah. um, I was mainly abstract for quite a few years. Okay. And then about the time, well, I may actually just simply at the time that my father died, which was quite a profound thing, uh, I became much more figurative, and um, so I worked away. I've worked away largely figuratively since then, 1984. And uh, yeah, so um, I find that I can express ideas. Then, you know, people used to look at my art and say, well, you know, well, abstractions again was a difficult matter in the 70s and 80s because people. Well, people still don't understand art, do they? There's some people who, who, whose job in life is to not understand art. You know, that's their position. So, anyway, I don't make it any easier for them. I don't think so. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. So, yeah. What themes are you focusing on right now? 
Or well, global um, climate change. Yeah. Yeah. And how it's tied in inextricably, inextricably with, um, uh, you know, capitalism and, and our inability to give up our way of life. Um, so, um, you know, we live our way of life and sort of divorce ourselves from the reality around us. Within your studio, you've, you've kind of gathered lots of things and, and things from your personal life. Um, there's, there's awesome cool objects like stones and driftwood and, and metal and I see some circuit boards over there. Well, this, yes, well, my wife, Glenis, she used to use, I went and when the press um, closed down oh. its original the Christchurch Press closed down its original huge mainframe computer in the 1980s, early yeah. 80s. And it had a whole floor that was just one big computer in the press offices. Mm -hmm. Fell down in the earthquake, sadly. Um, but uh, they dismantled that, and so some of those came out. And Glenis used to cut them up yeah. into little forms. But they also had like little drawings on the circuitry. So, you know, when you get a microchip these days, the, the stuff on the old circuit boards would go, would only be a tiny portion of what's on a, mm -hmm. on a, on a microchip these days. So each of those little chips, and they're called chips, each one's got written on it, chip. Uh, and, um, but they're only tiny fragments of information on there. So they're quite intriguing in that sense that, you know, you, Somebody, somebody's built up, but they're like little, they're quite delicate and they're beautiful. And some of them look like little figures, which is why I've kept mm. those ones. They're ones Glenis didn't use. They're quite nice on the window with the, the are, light coming through. Yes, there. yes, they are. They're good. And little silvery traces on them. Yeah. Yeah, no, very pretty. Or oh, shouldn't say that. As an artist, would you describe yourself primarily as a painter or a sculptor? Or? Oh, painter, painter. I, I do sculptures. <laughs> Uh, when I in lockdown most recently, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I I do them when I'm when I feel like it. But I I certainly haven't felt like it for the last while because I'm actually just totally absorbed into the whole process of painting just nice. at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah cool. Hmm. Do you have any shows coming up or? Well, uh, the Plunkett shows oh. coming up here. Uh, uh, people invite me to a show. I I try and do my best to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just at these very uncertain times, I think to myself, you know, you just don't know. I've had shows where they just keep getting postponed, and when they come around, you know, whatever. But yeah, uh, I should actually uh, be out there a wee bit more, trying to get more major shows. Yeah, because you had another show earlier in the year. I've yeah. done, I've done, I've had work in four shows this oh, year already. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so I, I just keep very busy with it. Yeah. So how do you start your process? Oh, well, I, I, I think about the size and the proportion of the canvas I want. So, and then I stretch it uh, out onto a board like this, just soft board. I, I actually, it's got all the, uh, the staple holes. I measure it. And I measure it so it theoretically could be stretched onto a stretcher, but I don't encourage that at all. Um, so it's got a border down here and down there. That's unpainted, and then this this becomes primed. And I apply texturing, uh, which you can buy in a big bucket. They're just a product. Um, and I'm pretty sure. If I put my glasses on, I'll probably see the little lines. No, I might have started this one just as a raw canvas and um, because I was in a hurry. <laughs> and because, you know, when you've got ideas coming quickly, and I just start in, in um, uh, a brown paint and I draw lines and try and work out the composition just as a sketch. You can see lines, residual lines here and there. And I... I work my way across it. You can see bits of figure in, you know, lying around inside the other paint or underneath the other paint. And I, I keep working like that right through the whole process. So uh, 
uh, I drew onto the raw canvas first, onto the stretched raw canvas in brown paint, which is a lovely experience actually. You can get it onto it really rapidly. And then with, uh, uh, I would have done this with the, with the blue green and uh, just very quickly, or, or, or the yellow. I started with a yellow over the top of the, over the top actually, and then I uh, probably put another color over that just to give, give a bit of depth with the acrylic and um, giving all my secrets away today <laughs> and um, just uh, working, it, working it up bit by bit after having done the drawing initially, which is not my normal way of process at all. But uh, in terms of actually producing something in it quickly, uh, I felt I wanted to get this idea down. And on a, I like working big because it's actually simpler uh, to for me to produce a big painting quickly than it is to produce a small one. And uh, especially, you know, I wanted uh, to fit all this complexity in. Uh, I do, I've got lots of drawings, so, and the drawings had got to a point where I, I thought, well, I combine this bit of drawing with that bit of drawing and um, uh, draw it up for a painting. So, uh, some parts of it happened very quickly, like then I you know, quickly paint, as I said, painted in this face and then into the wave form here and uh, then the eyes there and this one, two, three with the white areas of eye and then um, I wanted this sort of in the centre of um, uh, these are figures from um, uh, the internet initially, but then I work the figures up. Um, these are from uh, the attack on Congress. Um, combined with with images out of the Renaissance, you know, out of out of uh, Gothic period uh, paintings and um, a combination. And then the idea of the overlapping layers going backwards the wrong way. So the big at the back and the small at the front. So smaller figures come further forward just to play with, um, you know, size and scale. And um, just eyes and, and figures and just getting them all to work is actually quite, you know, some of these figures have changed, moved. Uh, I can see that this figure's moved from over here back to over here. And I just have to keep working away at that. Some things work straight off, like I think that those placards work straight off. And then I work into the waveform to build up the three-dimensionality of that. And... Uh, the idea that, uh, you know, it is actually a wave. And then uh, just keep altering colours. Being a big coloured painting uh, creates its own set of quite complex arrangements to get colours to stand out from each other effectively. So uh, it, it, does, it does keep evolving in that sense. So... Uh, you know, the wave, which is many layers of blues and greens. To, and uh, this is all acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. So the thing about acrylic paint is that it's, it, it, is, it is lovely in, in that I can add it, add it into, add pigment. Small amounts of pigment. I actually don't use a lot of paint. Small amounts of pigment can be... Um, uh, mixed into larger amounts of medium with gloss or without gloss and uh, build up translucent layers. And uh, it's, it's partly that glowing translucency that I like about acrylic paint, that I can control it so uh, easily, or not easily, but, you know, readily. And... Um, I, I just keep working like that uh, to make it all balance out. 
it's, it is a complexity. And then this little face ended up as a final gesture in a way. I thought, oh, well, if I just throw things, throw another little face into the corner of an eye, that throws the whole proposition a wee bit sideways. But uh, that's all fun. You know, it's, it's part of painting. So it combines a lot of, uh, a lot of issues for me. Um, it's not all about politics, it's, it's, it's about paint and about process. Acrylics are, are uh, satisfying in the sense that, you know, this is an immensely, in terms of exhibiting, this is an immensely flexible, uh, you, you don't fold it hard, but you can roll it up easily and transport it easily. And um, uh, it's durable. Yeah. So th this this is the first lockdown. Uh, this is uh, April twenty twenty. Is that right? First lockdown. About then. So I uh, uh, I started doing a series of drawings, and these relate very strongly to the painting we we've been talking about. So the. They are also to do with the paintings I was doing in 2019, 2018. They all, everything organically flows on to the next. So this series of drawings uh, is in order, actually, more or less. And they were just taken from ideas I already had about playing with feet and legs, which I've been doing for years. Um, and, and heads, empty heads, and uh, overlapping in, uh, you know, structures. And um, I was working my way through a series of um, old history, art history books, and uh, creating collages from them, actually, at the same time. Uh, I would just cut out old, you know, images out of, these um, old books and uh, uh, superimpose them. There, that's and there's a there's this is April twenty twenty. There's the first uh, drawing of that face there in that painting we discussed. So that's that's the origins of it. There's there's an there's a form out of earlier sculptural, just trying out ideas. Uh, I did I did uh, metal sculptures based on those sort of ideas twenty years ago. Uh, just included there. We'll flip over that one and that one. They're unnecessary. Oh, and that one. But there, the the eye has got bigger in this drawing. Just a, a few weeks later, a couple of weeks later, and I'm abstracting uh, into that drawing. A, a, a sort of a, a linked up line of faces, figures, hands, feet. Uh, just an idea about a compositional element of, uh, and that face keeps reoccurring. And then I. Uh, a drawing trying out Indian ink with paint, a slight blurriness to that one, ideas for more sculptures, uh, a, a drawing from a scene in a riot, that's 2016, I'll put that there because I, I, I wanted to reference it into the next drawing. So I probably redrew this one, yes I've redrawn it from this 2016 drawing which must be somewhere else, maybe even on the wall of the studio behind me. And then and then I start to develop this idea with the waves and the weather into this drawing. So it's just a continuous development of ideas, the, the legs going up into the weather, into the cyclonic pattern there with a bit of uh, structural damage there. Also developing the idea of combining paint and ink and drawing. And so that now it's become a much more fully formed idea of the legs 
and the and the cyclonic element. And so I'm just now in whatever date these drawings are. I'll whip one out and have a look at the back. And uh, if it wants to come out. June, by June, so we've gone April, May, June. The, the drawing is, um, I'm trying out different mediums with it, more colour, cr uh, crayon, uh, pastel colours, and um, we drawing on the back of a drawing. And little figures here, which I make more use of, little feet disappearing, overlapping faces. Much more colour on that one. And then this one, where, the, where that face we've been dealing with, has, uh, the eye is getting bigger and bigger. But also these figures, which come from older aluminium sculptures. So there's an old aluminium sculpture pattern there. And then these feet again, and then the wave, and the cyclone. Try to get them all combined. That book then finishes. Being book number, whatever it is. And so I can flip through these books. Uh, I can pull them out uh, at any time and do it. Uh, I'm just working on some much smaller paintings at the moment. And I just open this book and say, well, well, oh, here's three eyes, and I, I can do a painting of three eyes in diminishing size across a page, even though it's a horrible bloody drawing. And uh, turn the page small for little drawings, but that, that's what happens. And there's another idea, you know, with the wave going horizontally through the picture in front of everything, and I've been working on that recently. So uh, that's just how I work. Well, thanks, Michael, for sharing your insights and sharing your studio with us today. We've really appreciated it and um, talking about your process and, um, and what inspires you and, and a bit about your past and, and your 51 years of painting and, and, and art making. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Tara. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Lovely having you here. Oh, thank you.